Hey everyone, this is Nick and Plasma 5.25 should release today. It's absolutely packed with new features for the Plasma desktop and its default applications. To the point that I think it's probably one of the biggest releases of the whole KDE Plasma 5 cycle. It brings a ton of new personalization options with more accent color features. It has floating panels, it has more touch gestures for touch screens and touch pads, and it has a lot more Wayland support. I've been using it on my laptop for the past few weeks and it's been an amazing experience. So let's take a look at everything new right after we take a look at an amazing app that you can use on all your Linux desktops, OnlyOffice. This video is sponsored by OnlyOffice, the free and open source Office suite that's fully compatible with Microsoft Office documents formats. OnlyOffice has a desktop app available in virtually every packaging format you might want on Linux, but it also runs on Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. The interface is super intuitive, especially if you've been using Microsoft Office, as it's really close. And if you want to have your own Office suite in the cloud, you can also run your own OnlyOffice server and link it to Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Confluence, SharePoint, Redmine, Jira, and a lot of other services. I personally only use OnlyOffice on all my computers running Linux or otherwise, and I also have my own OnlyOffice document server linked to my Nextcloud server so I can edit documents online or offline using the desktop editors. Check out the link in the description below and give OnlyOffice a try, you won't regret it. So let's begin with the new customization stuff. And since this is KDE, there is a ton of things to cover. We already had accent colors in the appearance settings, but these now go a bit further. First, you can pick an accent color from your wallpaper, so every time you change your background, you'll get the accent color to match, based on the dominant colors. But if you want that accent to permeate even more, and you're tired of the default gray of the default breeze theme, you can also opt into the breeze classic theme, which will apply the accent color to the window title bars as well. And if that's not enough, and you want less contrast, you can even go further. Just edit a color scheme, and in the Options tab, you can choose to tint all colors using your accent color, so you get the same hue everywhere. Not all colors will look amazing together, and you might end up with something that looks like Hannah Montana Linux, but it's still a fantastic option to just change the look of your desktop from time to time. You just pick the accent color from your wallpaper, and each time you change your desktop, you change the whole look and colors of your whole desktop. It's really cool. And of course, everything changes smoothly with a nice fade, so the transition is super pleasing. The second big change is the floating panels. Panels on KDE used to be stuck against the screen edge, but no longer. You can now make them float above the screen edge they sit on in the More Options button when editing the plasma panel. The effect is pretty cool, although it's not very configurable yet. The height is fixed, so you can't adjust it, and the corners of the panel will automatically be rounded with a fixed radius that you can't adjust yet either. Look how they float! They all float down here! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. What I meant to say was, it's KDE, so either the settings are there but I just couldn't find them, or they don't exist yet but they probably will in the next release. It's KDE, it's like rule 34, but for settings. If you maximize a window, the panel will simply expand to occupy space on the left and right, and towards the screen edge, so you don't see just a slim part of your background at the bottom of the screen. I did notice a small issue that might be fixed in the final release, where maximizing a window will expand the panel, but unmaximizing will leave some kind of transparent shadow around it, it's not terribly distracting, but I hope it still get fixed. Hey, it's gotta be a good sign if my only nitpick is something super small like this. Floating panels work for any screen edge, and I think they really do look pretty good. They also did a good job with the click targets, which mean that you can overshoot and click under the panel and still activate the right applet. Pretty cool attention to detail. But that's not all. When applying a global theme, which are great to change the whole look and feel and layout of your desktop in one click, you now get to pick which parts you want to change. You don't have to apply the global theme in bulk. Another good thing for people who like having more consistency is the integration of GNOME applications, at least the non-libadvita ones. 
Header bars will have a border radius, more consistent with the breeze look and feel, and the menus look a bit more native as well. Apps with title bars will also use your accent color settings, although apps using header bars won't. Leave it to KDE to theme GNOME more than GNOME ever themed itself. Full disclaimer, I love GNOME just as much as KDE. I'm not attacking any of these desktop environments. They're all great for different people. Why did the internet decide that constructive criticism was equivalent to shitting on something? All desktop environments are beautiful in their own way and no desktop environment was ever armed in the making of these videos. Now, the last smaller visual detail is on the login screen, which will now shake when you enter the wrong password, like on most other desktops. Onto the Plasma desktop itself, and there are plenty of things to cover here as well. The user switcher applet also has a nicer look, with a picture of the currently logged in user, and the pop-up when clicking that applet now looks nicer as well with more spacing. The pop-up menu for copying the date to the clipboard in various formats has also been revamped to be more legible. Okay, are these improvements too small for you? Sure, let's move on to the big things then. First is touch mode. KDE Plasma has a tablet mode that was toggled automatically when the system detected that you were using a touch screen only. Now you can decide to toggle it on and off yourself. This setting lives in the Workspace Behavior Settings page, and unfortunately it can't be found by searching for Tablet Mode or Touch Mode in the settings. You can now decide to automatically enable that mode when needed, to have it always on or always off. What this mode does is simply make touch targets bigger everywhere in the system. Title bars get bigger with bigger controls and more spacing, all buttons are also enlarged if you're using the Breeze theme, and the task switcher also gets more spacing, so it's easier to actually tap on the app you want to open or focus. It's been largely improved and it's great for two-in-one users or users of devices with touchscreens. I don't own any of these devices, so I just couldn't give it a good shot. Still, on that note, you now get the ability to do gestures from the screen's edge, basically like hot corners. You can configure an action for each screen edge, ranging from toggling the overview to showing the desktop, showing all windows, or opening KRunner. There's a lot you can do here, although these only work on Wayland, as far as I know. And if you're a pleb like me and you still use a touchpad, then there are some good stuff for you here as well. Swiping four fingers down on the touchpad will open the overview with your open windows, virtual desktops, and a search bar. That was the big new feature for Plasma 5.24. Swiping four fingers up will bring an overview of all your virtual desktops. Basically, it's the desktop grid. And swiping four fingers left or right will move to the next or previous workspace. All these gestures are now one-to-one, -one, which means they follow your fingers as they move on the touchpad. And they're exclusive to Wayland as well. But they also work on touchscreens. Unfortunately, there are some issues with these gestures that I just couldn't let slide. First, I couldn't find a way to configure these gestures. Looking for gestures or touchpad in the settings doesn't bring any configuration option. I prefer my gestures to only use three fingers, not four, but it doesn't look like I can change that. Again, maybe I missed the setting, but it also wasn't in the configuration options of the related desktop effect. Second, while these gestures feel really good if you do them slowly, if you move too fast, then they don't animate at all. You just jump from one state to the other. And finally, if you swipe down for the overview, you would expect a swipe up to bring you back to the desktop. But if you have the desktop grid enabled, then swiping up will move you to the desktop grid instead. And there doesn't seem to be a smooth way to cancel out a gesture once you're in the end state of it. You either repeat the same gesture, which jarringly brings you back to the desktop, or you enter a new gesture, which starts from the desktop, and so is also jarring. I feel that GNOME did a better job on the touchpad gestures, at least for their overview. But this is only the first step for KDE, so it probably will improve and get better over time. And also, my virtual desktops don't appear anymore in the overview. And no, disabling the desktop grid did not bring them back. In the overview, you can also opt to exclude minimized windows, so your workspace can be a bit cleaner. Other small changes include the ability to select a non-native resolution for your display on Wayland. You can now see the frequency your Wi-Fi network uses, if your network uses both 2.4 and 5 GHz, 
and the KRunner spell checker action now detects the language you're using and tells you if the spelling is correct. On to the default apps, and let's start with Discover. Discover now can display the permissions that Flatpak apps use. They're at the bottom of the apps page, and they will tell you with nice icons and a bit of text what your applications will have access to and what that means. Pretty handy to check that they don't ask for more than what they really need to. You can't tell an app to not have access to something, but there's flat seal for that. The app page also has been overhauled, with instant access to some details, like the license of an app, the size on disk, or the version. And it can now tell you when an app has been uninstalled, but still has some data on disk. So you can clear that data and make sure you're not wasting space. The sidebar will also show all subcategories that were previously located in the application's submenu. So space is better used and you're not wasting clicks. Finally, proprietary apps will now have a warning you can display by clicking a small icon next to the license name to warn you that this app might do weird things or collect data. I feel like Discover does not really live up to its name. It's not really easy to use it to discover new applications. It doesn't do a great job at showcasing apps or even KDE apps. And the search is still pretty bad. But at least now you can get all the available information about an app before you install it. There are smaller changes. The KDE Info Center now displays more data about your device, especially the serial number. And there's a new firmware security page that displays the state of UEFI Secure Boot, UEFI Keys, Linux Swap, and more. Finally, the System Monitor now lets you configure the various pages to load when you open the app so you don't have to wait for them to load when you actually need to use them in a hurry. Of course, there are a lot of other default apps that get updates regularly through the KDE Gear releases, but these are not bundled with the KDE Plasma releases, which is unfortunate for me because it would make covering the new releases of KDE a lot easier, but I guess there might not be a good technical reason for bundling these updates together. Plasma 5.25 is a big release. It improves a ton of things in the look and feel department, with more powerful accent colors, the floating panels, and better GTK app integration. It also adds gestures for the most important effects, so using KDE on a laptop or a touchscreen is a much nicer experience. And Wayland support is now basically fully fleshed out. There are still some kinks to iron out in these new features, and the gestures need some more configuration options, but it's still a great step forward. And yes, I did just ask for more options in KDE. But I'm sure that if these settings already exist, someone will point them out to me politely in the comments. Politely. KDE seems to have that cycle of releasing two or three versions focused on polish and bug fixing, followed by one or two releases of new features. And I must say, I quite like this approach. You release something, get some feedback and ideas, and then make it as smooth as you can. It does mean that some releases are more polished than others, but fortunately 5.25 really does feel like a solid, solid upgrade. It works really well apart from the few issues that I mentioned in the video, it's just good. So as soon as your distro offers it, it's definitely a recommended upgrade. Just like today's sponsor is also definitely recommended. Tuxedo makes computers with Linux pre-installed. They have laptops, they have desktops, they have NUX, they have high-end workstation-grade stuff, they have lower-end, more affordable devices, and they ship worldwide. They're based in Germany, but they offer a ton of keyboard layouts. And each device has a plethora of configuration options, including your own logo on the back of the device, which is really, really nice looking. Mine at least does look super cool. They recently sent me their Stellaris 15, which I'm probably going to buy because after using it for a bit, it's just so nice. So expect a review for this one later down this month. And they also have some exciting projects, like for example, an external water cooling solution for the Stellaris 15. You plug it at the back and it just water cools the Nvidia dedicated GPU so you can get its maximum performance. It's just nice. So if you need a new device that you are sure will work with Linux 100%, head over to the link in the description below, click it and get yourself a tuxedo laptop or desktop. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to drop a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. 
but do tell me why, it's just more polite this way. And if grandma gave you a buttload of cash for your birthday and you don't know what to do with it, you can also click the super thanks button or the PayPal link in the description, or you can join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!